In the pursuit of enlightenment, we often find ourselves searching for external answers, waiting for a hero or a messiah to show us the way. But what if the truth isn't something out there? What if the journey itself is the enlightenment we've been seeking all along? This is the divine hero's journey, the realization that the answers are within, that the quest for mastery is not about finding someone or something to lead us, but about recognizing that we are the ones we've been waiting for. We live in a world where we constantly look outside of ourselves for validation, for wisdom, and for guidance. Whether it's in religion, education, or society, we're told to search for solutions in external figures or systems. Yet, as many spiritual teachings remind us, the master we seek is within. The light we chase is already inside us, waiting to be discovered. As we explore this truth, we must stop seeking solutions from external saviors and realize that we hold the power to create our reality. The journey isn't about reaching a final destination, but about understanding that every step, every challenge, and every experience is part of the awakening. So let's dive into this exploration of self-mastery and inner light, knowing that the divine hero is not someone else, it's you. This is something about the divine hero. The divine hero is on the journey. He's always looking for the, for, for the enlightenment, and he come to find out when he gets, when he finally reached the enlightenment, that the enlightenment was the damn journey itself. You understand what I'm saying? Was the journey itself and all this type of thing. Don't look for the Messiah syndrome, because we always try to single one out. We all, you know, we always try to single one time out. And, and it's interesting because the last couple of years I extended the question and answer. You know why? Because I found out that the questions were actually answers. And what it is, is this is a gathering of the light beings to filter in all this damn energy and this knowledge. You understand what I'm saying? You are just as part of the whole quest. So the key is you must understand this particular part. For the mere fact that you asked that question about is there anyone you took it outside of your own self. Right. Go back and look at Last Dragon. He looked for the damn master the whole movie. And it took him, to, and that's the, that's the basic premise of any uh, uh, a Wu-Tang martial arts movie. Is the, is, is, is the basic premise is that the, the, the uh, student gets, in, get, uh, gets his ass kicked. Well, what happens is the student's teacher dies. And the guy who killed the uh, student teacher, the student is the prized pupil, and he is always better than the guy who killed his teacher. But he has to go and do all these techniques and trying to find other people that can kill this man, and it's always at the end of the movie when he realizes, hey, I am the goddamn master. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then all of a sudden, his aura, he starts glowing. And then if you look at it, the one who kicked his ass was shown up. So he was shown up telling him that you are the master and that I am making you better by this ass whipping that I'm going to give you. Now the other part of it is, as Brother was saying, is that the problem with us is that we keep looking for the problem solving solutions outside of ourselves. And they're always going to dangle that carrot in front of you. They're going to dangle Christianity and hang Jesus on a cross in front of you. Like you're going to hang it around your neck like a yoke. You're going to always be looking for solutions outside of yourself because that's what a good educated person does. And it's all these motherfuckers that are educated that's fucking up the planet now. And every time they're looking for shit to find out what their education can't give them, they go in the bush to some man that is digging in the earth and in the ground and say, Master, teach me. And he uses his PhD. He ain't asked him whether or not this is Dr. So-and-so digging in the ground. He's coming to kneel at his feet. So what the fuck are you worried about going into a school so you could get a better job working on a fucking plantation? That's the bullshit that a lot of our new sophisticated sorority sisters are about. And we got to get them out of that bullshit because the quintessence, the quintessence right now, the quintessence of what it is sister was looking for is inside of the blood crystals. In the search for ancient wisdom, we face a fragmented world, and this is where many falter. Across the board, from the modern comedic scholars to devout followers of specific spiritual paths, there's a tendency to isolate, to narrow the field of vision. People choose one extreme over another, believing that their singular focus holds the entire truth. But let me tell you, if you move from one extreme to the next without understanding the full picture, 
you become trapped in the same limitations you were trying to escape. Afrocentric scholars may reject everything but Egyptian texts, and the religious might cling only to their holy books. But in doing so, they miss the broader puzzle. The ancient world, like our understanding, is scattered in fragments. It's a puzzle we have to piece together, drawing from Egyptian wisdom, biblical texts, Islamic teachings, and even sources we might not typically consider. These are just tools, pieces of a larger tapestry. As chaos magic teaches, nothing is true, everything is permitted. It's all relative, and to master this, you must pull from every corner. The ancient world is in fragment. This is the problem that most of the people, see, everybody make this mistake. Even the, the newfound chemotologists made this mistake. Because basically what happened is we live in a, 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 a compulsive society, whereas in what you call chaos, or what they call quantum psychology, is this. If you go from one extreme to the other extreme, you become just as bad as the extreme you left. So what happens is this. A lot of the Afrocentric, the chemotologists say, I'm not going to read nothing but Egyptian stuff. Right. The Islamics say, I'm not going to read nothing but, but, but Islam. The key is the ancient world is in fragments. Is. That means that it's like a damn detective. You got the dog going to pick from here, you got to pick from here, you got to pick from here. But if you throw out the Bible, mm. you just threw out a piece of, you mm. see, the whole structure of the puzzle. So the key is that you tr there are only tools. Mm -hmm. that, now in chaos magic it says nothing is true, all is permitted. Because mm -hmm. you're talking about relativity. You see what I'm saying? Um, so the key is, is what we're talking about is you use a consortium of everything. And then again on the other hand a lot of things that you think is not everything you need to start dealing with. When we talk about just the goddamn nursery rhyme. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Popeye and olive oil. We talk about all kinds of stuff. They're teaching their people, you, you will go down and go to doggone Barnes and Nobles and they might have one little religious section that got some bullshit up in there where they sending their children to Forbidden Planet, mm -hmm. which is the fucking comic book store and all the good shit is up in there. Because mythology is physics. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So my point is, is you, a detective, leave no stones unturned. Oh. So right now what we're talking about is um, uh, uh, it's in fragments, and when you doggone setting yourself out on a sectarian manner, you don't get the whole key. That's the Holy Grail right there. The Holy Grail is when you searching for the Grail, you don't find out that you the goddamn Grail Hello. the whole time. Hello. You see, mm-hmm. The ancient world, much like our journey for wisdom, is scattered in fragments, each holding a piece of the grander truth. To truly unlock the secrets of existence, we cannot afford to focus narrowly on one path, one tradition, or one perspective. Whether it's Egyptian wisdom, biblical scripture, Islamic teachings, or even the unexpected knowledge found in pop culture and folklore, every piece contributes to the whole. Chaos magic reminds us nothing is true, everything is permitted, urging us to break free from rigid thinking and embrace the limitless nature of knowledge. The divine hero's journey is not about waiting for answers from outside, but about gathering these fragments understanding their significance, and recognizing that the true power lies within. The Holy Grail, the enlightenment we seek, is not found in a single doctrine or belief. It is the sum of all parts, a mosaic of insights and experiences that, when pieced together, reveal the deeper truths of life. And when we finally understand that, we see that the hero, the master, the divine being we've been searching for, has been within us all along.